Well, you have seen the end of Season 4 of World Gone Mad, and I'm here to talk about it. I'm here to give you the process of everything that you want to know, everything you may not have ever, ever thought you'd find out about Season 4 of World Gone Mad. This season is one of the most important projects I think I've ever worked on in the history of this channel. For the last eight years of me doing YouTube, this is one of the biggest things I have ever done on the channel. And I'm going to go into the work process of this season. I'm going to give you a full rundown on everything and why I'm sure the biggest question that everybody has, why did it take you two years to make this season of World Gone Mad? I'm going to give you that full download in this video. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, you watched the end of four, right? You've seen the end of season four. I would hope so if you've seen this video. Obviously... This is one of those situations where it, it, it's not easy to make a video about this. It's really not. It's not an easy video to make, but it's one that I think you World Gone Mad fans deserve. I think you guys deserve to know what took so long and what, what happened with this, right? Because this is, in my opinion, my favorite season I've ever written and ever worked on of anything I've ever written in my life. But it's also my least favorite thing that I've ever written in my entire life. And I'm sure that doesn't make much sense to people, but I'm going to go into that a little bit. So, this show started back in 2021, right? We had season one, went through six episodes. There was such a high demand, I remember, after the first season of World Gone Mad. There were so many people saying, season two, now, 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 you know? Like, and I was really happy about that, because I... When I started this show, I didn't think people would even believe in it. You know what I'm saying? Like a narrated show with images and 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 text and stuff. Like what the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? Like pe like I remember back in the day like that was so unheard of. Like people were like, "Oh, what the hell is that?" you know? And ever since that first season came out of World Gone Mad, I've seen which I love this. This absolutely warms my heart so much. I've seen so many different people out there say, "Dan, do you mind if I kind of take some inspiration off of you and kind of do something like you did with World Gone Mad? I can't count how many people that have told me that. And I'm just like, yes, of course. Like, like I love hearing that. I love hearing the fact that my show can inspire so many others because everybody gets inspired off of something. You know what I'm saying? And here's the thing, right, is that seeing my show become one of those for people, it, it honestly was one of the greatest feelings in the world. I was so happy about it. And season two came out. I aired that uh, first half in uh, middle 2021, and then late 2021, we wrapped up season two. Season three didn't come too much later after that. It was literally in February 2022, we had season three that came out. And then after that, I knew that season four of World Gone Mad was going to be a bit of a bigger project than three. So ultimately, I was like, okay, we're going to air the first half of season four in the fall of 2022, and the second half of season four in the beginning of 2023. That was my ultimate plan for season four. And at the time, I had anywhere between 13 to 14 episodes. I still hadn't figured out which one I was going to go with yet. Um, but ultimately, I knew it was going to be 13 to 14 episodes for this uh, fourth season. And here's the thing. I advertised it a lot. Uh, I remember over the course of that summer of 2022, I was like, guys, you're in for a horror-based, 80s-themed uh, really just horrific and intense fourth season. You know, that's what I, I did. There was a lot of neon coloring and there was a lot of really, you know, exciting type of stuff uh, going on for that. And it picked up production in May of 2022. And obviously, here's the thing. It lasted me all the way until August. Uh, I finished the first half of season four of World Gone Mad in August. And it was originally seven episodes, if you're curious. Originally, the first half of season four was going to be seven episodes, which people that were watching the show at that time remember that advertising, I'm sure. It was advertised as seven episodes. And I had this season so figured out that I even contacted a good buddy of mine, Rowdy, and got him to make uh, character intros for me, which he did a phenomenal job on as well, too. And I got him to do those for me around, I think, late summer 2022. It was somewhere around that time. I remember I got him to do those character intros, and uh, basically each episode would focus on a character and stuff. And, you know, we kind of did that for a little bit of time on the show. We did that for season two. We did it for season three. I brought him on for the first half of four. Um, and uh, we I gave him all these, you know, different environment shots and, and what I wanted for some of these intros. And obviously I let him kind of get to work and make his, you know, his own thing. And I had those seven episodes figured out. Like I was, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, that's how we're going to do it. I, I didn't really think too much more about it. I was like, that's how we're going to do it. 
And on Halloween night, um, which was two months after the wrap-up of filming the first half, so I had it planned and I had it ready for a good while. Um, on Halloween night, I aired 401, and everybody, you know, was watching it, everybody enjoyed it, it was, it was really cool, um, and it was a really big episode, you know, it was a big return for the show. And I was really excited, because I was like, man, people really dig the first episode of season four, that's awesome. And then I proceed to then be like, oh, that's awesome. All right, let's upload 402. Let's upload this. Let's upload that. And I was like, let's get these episodes out on YouTube so I can sporadically release them. Holy damn, probably the biggest like middle finger I've ever gotten in my entire life. I go to upload 402 for the following week. And I remember it was this very quick 30 minute episode of James running into Lincoln, screwing him over and, and that ultimately being the episode, you know what I'm saying? I, I had that in mind. It was going to be mostly flashback with a little bit of current day stuff. And, and that was going to be it. It was a really quick half hour episode and I, I go to upload it and randomly I just see blocked in like every country. I was like, what, what? <laughs> I was like, what, what? Hello? You know, so I, I tested out. I was like, okay, maybe it's just 402's problem. It was the whole half, guys. It was the whole half. Episodes two through seven, all blocked. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, what do I do? You know what I'm saying? It, it was the biggest like, what do I do? There's people that are waiting for this, you know? There's people that really enjoyed that first episode. They're really intrigued about the season. I, I can't let them down. You know, I, I I got fans, you know, like I, I got people that are watching this, you know, and, and I'm just sitting there like, what am I going to do? You know, and at the time I remember I was already really busy in my personal life. You know, I was starting college and, you know, stuff was, was going really busy around that time. And that's why I filmed the first half of season four in the summer, because I knew that in the fall, I wasn't going to have time to film. Like I was fully focused on my work. I was fo focused on college. It was not, you know, it was not a good scene. It was not a good thing at all. So I was like, okay, I'll have it ready. And then the fall, it'll come out. Well, the biggest mistake I did, and this one's on me for sure, is I didn't upload these episodes to YouTube. I just never really thought of it. I was like, okay, well, when the week, when the week comes up for me to air these episodes, I'll just, you know, put them on YouTube and that'll be that, you know? Biggest mistake I ever made in my life because YouTube took all these songs, all these 80s music songs that I had planned for this show, and they took that shit down immediately. I remember they took it down, and I've never had a problem with music, you know, with YouTube. They're usually, you know, pretty good with that stuff. This, you know, this season, every single episode with that 80s style that I was going for, this horror, like, 80s style vibe all got taken down. I couldn't air a damn thing. And I was so mad. I was so mad. And the worst thing about this, and anybody that's that's either been accused of this or <laughs> or just anything will know what I felt like in this moment. I remember when that happened, I was like, people are going to think I'm lazy. People are going to think I'm lazy. People are going to think I'm slacking off. I remember I was so upset because I was like, people are going to think that I'm messing here. People are going to think that this is like, some put on where I'm just not doing my show because I just don't want to do it. You know, I don't care about my fans. I'm just not doing it, you know, because I don't feel like it, you know, like I had this whole half season ready. I was so fucking annoyed. I was so mad. And I remember I was sitting there. I was like, what am I going to do? You know, and here it gets funny. You, you think I'm done? There's worse. It gets worse. I remember I was sitting there. I was like, well, I'll just re-edit this. Come to find out, my dumbass fucking got rid of the unedited versions of these episodes. So all I had on my files were these edited episodes of 4A. That means that the, the music was stuck in the fucking episode. I couldn't take that out. So I was pissed. I was like, this is going to take forever. Like every single episode was, was, was removed. I was like, what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? What am I going to do? I can't take this music out of the episodes. I, I don't have an unedited version of this episode. Like, you know, I, I, I have to just refilm. I have to re-narrate every single episode, at least when those tracks play, which unfortunately was like half the episode. I had 80s music in like every single one of these episodes. So here I am scrambling, trying to race to the clock to try to get this half season done. And you'd, you wouldn't even believe the process. I sat there and I tried to re-narrate portions of episodes for those few weeks. And I tried to get this done and this done. Nothing was getting caught up because there was so much to get done. And I was just like, this is never going to happen. 
So I put a public delay out for 4A of World Gone Mad. Around November, late November, I put a public delay for this half, and I was like, this is not going to happen this year. It's just not going to happen. And I knew it wasn't. So, um, after feeling massively defeated with my show, I can't lie, I felt very defeated, and I was like, oh my god. Then came probably, I would argue, the darkest stage of World Gone Mad I've ever seen. I remember hearing a lot of things. A lot of people were like, oh, this, this show is never getting done. This show is a lost cause. This is whatever. And I was just like, you know, and I, I'm sitting there. I'm like, I can't really argue with that. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't really argue with that. You know, I'm sitting here. I'm like, yeah, you know, it probably won't, you know. And then that thought kept running through my head, which I'm sure any, you know, solo creator, and that's, that's why I have such respect for, for solo creators, people that make independent projects. That's why one of the biggest things that I do on this channel is review solo projects. I reviewed the plague back in the day. I, I did review survival of the fittest before I was hired as a writer for that. Like I love independent projects because they're so creative. They're so different because it's all about the mind. It's not about the company. It's not about the money. It's not about any of that. It's about the love and passion that people put into their projects. You know what I'm saying? And I know so many people that do that and are doing that, you know, coming up. And I have such respect for those type of people. You know what I'm saying? And I'm friends with a good bunch of them to do that. But I'm sitting here with my show in the fucking gutter. It's like December 2022. People are wondering where the fuck this show is. I have fully edited episodes that pretty much every single episode needs to be re-narrated because of this stupid music that gets taken down, ruining the vision of this season, ruining the 80s vibe that I was going with with this season. I couldn't do jack shit. I had to re-figure out what tracks I wanted to use, re-narrate pretty much every single episode, at least piece by piece. I was like, what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? I, I I was stressed to the max. I can't lie. On top of that, working like I did in college with all this work on top of me, I remember in December, this came the darkest time of the show. I actually said for about a month straight, I didn't, I didn't publicly say it because I didn't want to say it yet. I remember I said to myself, I'm fucking done. <laughs> this show is over. And I, I said that. I was like, this show is done. You know, and, the, and I, I even thought to myself, I'm like, oh, like, Oh, well, people that watch the show and people that care about it are going to be pissed. I'm like, I don't care. It's enough. I'm done. This is driving me insane. I can't get any of this work done. I can't get any of this done. I, I can't do it, you know? And that's the biggest thing I can say to anybody out there. And I am going to take this moment to teach every single person watching this video a very big lesson. <laughs> I'm going to go Roger on you here for a little bit. If you in your life think that you can't do it, and I know this sounds sappy, but fucking stay with me. If you think in your life that, that you can't do something, you can't accomplish something, and people are telling you you can't, or even just you yourself, you're thinking that I just can't do this, I can't make it, or whatever. If you have the passion, and if you know what you're doing, and you know what you're talking about, and you know how to get stuff done, do not ever give up. Do not give up. Because I almost did with this season. I almost did with this show. Because it was at such an all-time low production-wise that I honestly did not think I had the time, the just mental capacity, honestly, with all the horrible stuff that went down with it. I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this show anymore. I, I was like, I'm not doing it. I'll announce a delay in early 2023. I'll deal with it next year, and I'm going to put this show off, and I'm done. I am done. This show is canceled. <laughs> that That is what happened. I'm not kidding you. That is what happened. And then I get into the early year of 2023, and I remember this very vividly. And I seriously want to support some of my friends here on this, because this really meant a lot to me. I remember these two guys in particular, Egamat and uh, Wasteland World Official. I remember I was at a place where I thought this show was going to be canceled. I thought the show was going to be over. I was like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It's too much. It's way too much of a stressor. Uh, it's it's more of a stressor than it is a passion. And that's when I knew I was like, this is, it can't happen. You know what I'm saying? And then these guys, I remember you had Mega Matt that uploaded a video called season four death predictions for world gone mad for when the show returns. And I'm like, just, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, people still care about this. Like what? Like, and I had, I remember Wasteland World Official, he made like all these DVD arts and stuff. 
And I remember I had these comments from people saying, man, we're 2023. Like, I'm guessing it's coming back soon. And I'm like, damn. Like, when all that happened, and it happened in, like, the, the matter of, like, I think, like, a couple days. I was like, it just, like, you know, sometimes you see stuff and it just feels like a sign. That was the sign for me. Those two guys, you guys, sporadically asking me over those few days, it was, like, overwhelming. I was like, where's this all coming from? Like, randomly, Mega Matt does a prediction video for, for you know who's going to die in, in that season, and I get, you know, Wasteland World Official making all these arts and DVD arts, and I got, like, all this stuff, and then people are asking me randomly, like, oh, yeah, so is it coming soon? I'm like, damn, you know? And it was the biggest, like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, okay, <laughs> you know what? Scrap what I said. I was this close, guys. I'm not kidding you. I was this close to, to making an announcement at the beginning of 2023 saying it's done. It's over. I'm sorry. It's done. Those guys and you fans saved this show. I was ready to give up. I shouldn't have been, but I was ready to. And that is what saved the show. And I remember, I was like, fuck this shit. Fuck all this blockage shit. I'm getting this season out. People care about this shit. It's happening. But then the passion came in. And when the passion came in, which I always have passion for the show, it was only that little month there that I was kind of like, I don't know, you know, but when that passion came back in me, when that spark came back in me, I was sitting there and I was like a half hour episode with Lincoln and, and James, this quick little backstory for 30 minutes when people have been waiting like good few months now. No. And I wasn't comfortable with that episode. I was like, we're going to enhance the absolute hell out of this episode. I gave people an hour and a half episode for 402. And I remember I upgraded that episode to the length that it was. And I thought it turned out really good. You guys seem to have agreed. And I remember I was like, yeah, this is awesome. An hour and a half of, of all this. This is exactly what I wanted. And I remember people enjoyed that so much. And I remember I enjoyed how much I, I overly like, you know, upgraded it. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to air the rest of 4A. I'm going to air 403 to 407. It was still just seven episodes at the time, you know. And then 402 happened, and then I sat there, and I was like, Dan, you know you're not happy with this. You know you're not happy with this, you know what I mean? And that's when I was sitting there, and I was like, this isn't ready. This is still not ready. You know, I want it to be ready, but it's not ready. So I was like, okay, I'm going to rewrite some of this season. I'm going to rewrite it, and I did a lot of things. Lincoln's last episode turned into an over hour episode when it used to be like another half hour little mini thing of his death. Yeah, no joke. That's how short his death episode was. There wasn't as much depth in that episode as there is now. 402 was a quick little 30 minute episode about Bishop that barely got the point across. It was just slightly there. 405 was originally 405 and 406 and that turned into two episodes, but it was originally originally just one episode. And there were so many different things. The Tom comedy episode that you guys saw, episode eight, was originally episode six. And originally it was this episode, which which to me was the most average thing in the world. It was an episode about him going to a trailer park and getting wasted with Rivers, Roger, and a few others. And they just go to a trailer park for no apparent reason, just because just because they do. And just because they want to get away from the stress of Lincoln's death. I remember that was like my motive back in the day why I wrote that. And then the mid-season finale, which would have been episode seven, James would have attacked the uh, the compound. Uh, he would have attacked Kingstonville. And, you know, that still had gone down the same way. That stayed the same. Bishop turning and flipping and, you know, going after James and stuff. That all was the same. But it didn't have the depth that it has now. You know what I mean? And I knew that. I was like, it doesn't have the depth that it, that it had, you know? So then I'm sitting there and I'm like this isn't ready at all. I got to fix this whole half season. It's not what I want. And I remember I, I tried to convince myself over time. I was like, eh, it's fine. It's, it's fine. The half is fine. It's, it's the way it should go. It's, you know, I like it. It's good enough. It'll work, you know? And I'm like, yeah, but this show has already been delayed. People have already been waiting for this. Do you really want to give them something that's, you know what I mean? And that's when I was like, no, you don't. So I remember I put the show back into production. I paused the show again after 402, was not proud of that. And it was tough too, because I remember 
I had this very clear mindset of seven episodes for the first half. Hell, I got my buddy Rowdy to make me character intros based off of those seven episodes. And here I am changing the plots in insanely. So I'm sitting there feeling horrible and I'm like, but I, but people have like, people like him have made work on this show. You know what I'm saying? Like they've, they've worked on intros and stuff and they've worked on stuff like how the hell am I, you know? And I remember I was like, people are going to hate this. Like people are going to hate this. I was like, no, this is going to ruin the, the, the people it's gonna ruin the image of the show i was seriously like thinking that but i was like story comes first i was like i gotta change this half it's not what i want it to be so i enhanced it i changed it i filmed it i enhanced every single episode of 4a except for 404 for some reason i just thought that episode was fine i was like oh whatever 404 the backstory i don't need to work on that anymore that's fine I was like 403, 405, 406, whatever. I enhanced the half season to, to nine episodes. I upgraded it a shit ton. And I was like, okay, this is ready to go. It was ready by August of 2023. And I remember I was like, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, let's go. And then I aired Lincoln's death episode in August. Uh, or I think it was like early September, something like that. I aired that episode. People were seriously like, what the hell? But I remember the big thing that people said when they saw that episode was like, okay, but I'm sure Bishop's backstory is going to be really in-depth, really lengthy, we're really going to go into it. And then I remembered the goal that I set for myself at the beginning of this season, which, if you're not aware, the original thing that I knew I had to do going into season four, because as a writer, I set goals for myself, you know what I'm saying? You want to set goals and achieve those goals. My goal with season four, World Gone Mad, was to give people the death of the lead of the show, killed by this guy, that you eventually get his backstory for, you fall in love with the character, you actually start to really like the character, and then he's ripped away from you at the end. You know what I'm saying? Which obviously, if you've seen 414, you know that you know how that goes down. That was my original intent for season four. But not having an in-depth backstory screwed the whole thing up. You know what I'm saying? It screwed the whole thing up because I'm like, this is just a, you know, simple, you know, like barely a half hour backstory. Are people going to connect with this? No, they're not because there's not enough time. You know what I'm saying? So once again, after 403, I was like, this half is ready, but 404 is not. It's not at all. And if you've seen 404, you'll know that episode is lengthy as hell. That's over two hours long. And that took me multiple months to get that done. It was like going into production for a film. It really was. I put off A Killer in the Making, my original intended film, to work on that late last year. Because I was like, you know, no. Honestly, like, I this is more important. I gotta get this episode in the fashion that it's done in. And you know what's funny? It turned out to be one of my favorite episodes of the entire series. 404. You know what I'm saying? And it's because I took the time to do what I needed to do with that episode. Yes, it delayed the show. Yes, it left it in an awkward spot again. But I was like, it's for the story. I have to do it. And meanwhile, in that time, that half was done. And I was slowly starting to work on upgrading and enhancing 4B. Because if you guys didn't know, 4B A World Got Mad initially had uh, you know very limited episodes. Originally, season 4 World Got Mad was going to end with the end of The Apostles. But I decided to take, and this is also another fun fact about season four, I took the first four episodes of season five in concept and put them as the final four episodes of season four of World Gone Mad. Originally, the first four episodes of season five is what you, you're you about to see or well, what you've seen by now, the end of season four of World Gone Mad. The, you know, Blackberry Ranch episodes, the, you know, the volcano, all that stuff. That was originally the beginning of season five. But I felt like it worked better at the end of season four. So there I was upgrading the second half of season four as well too. Doing all these uh, extra episodes and all this other stuff. That took me the remainder of 2023 to enhance 404 and to try to enhance 4B not only in the writing but in the production. I had to film a bunch of stuff. It took a whole bunch of time. And that's what I was doing all the way till the end of 2023. And then... By the end of 2023, around Christmas time, I finally finished season four of World Gone Mad. It was done. Like, at least the first half of it was done, and most of 4B was done. It was good enough to where I was like, okay, I can air this first half, and 4B will probably be ready by, like, 
late fall or something, or like early, you know, uh, early, uh, maybe like early fall, late summer 2024, which luckily that's exactly what happened. But, you know, I remember at the end of 2023, I was sitting there, I was like, okay, this is December, 2023. It's been over a year, you know, but I finished the first half and I'm already good ways into four B. I was like, okay, you know, I can air this, you know, I can release this. And then I found out the ones who live was releasing in February, 2024 which was exactly around the time I was thinking of releasing these episodes. And then I was like, okay, The Ones Who Live is a show that I've been waiting for for like five plus years. Everybody's attention is going to be on that show, as it should be. I was like, I can't release this in February. I was like, shit. Then I really was like, damn it, you know? But at that point, honestly, it was the least of my problems when it came to this half season. I was like, okay, you know what? This half season's ready. You know what? I'm just going to wait. You know, I was like, in the spring, we'll release 4B or 4A and we'll release, you know, these episodes together. That's what we'll do. And that is exactly what I did. And I released the first half of season four and you have finally seen it. And I aired it in a binge format and you've seen season 4A of World Gone Mad. And over the course of time, I fixed up 4B. I was getting 4B all ready to go. And around that time, I hired my co-writer, Mega Matt, uh, to come on in and actually give me a helping hand. Uh, he helped me uh, with when it comes to 4B, adding plots to 4B, adding things to this half season to make it even even better than it you know already was. I felt like, but you know I you know got a lot of great advice from him. Hiring Mega Matt is one of the greatest things I've ever done because you guys would not even believe the stuff that he's done to help out this brand. It's not even funny, and I've seen the guy's passion for it. I've seen it with him as a viewer over the course of the few years that he was. I mean, it's not even funny. Like, Mega Matt has told me so many crazy stories of the lengths that he's gone through to cover the show. And it's insane. The the passion that he's had for the show is insane. And I always said to myself when I was working on this, and this is huge credit to him, I always said to myself over the course of the years, I've told many people this, I was like, I'm not looking for a co-writer. I'm not looking for one. It's, it's just not, you know, I don't need one, you know? It, I, I'm fine, you know? And I remember when I when this happened, I remember Mega Matt brought me on. I was shocked to my very core. He brought me on to co-write his uh, series, Survival of the Fittest, which is a show that we review here on the channel all the time. And now we don't because I'm helping write it. But, you know, he hired me as a writer for the show and I'm huge into production for it. And I'm, I'm helping out with a whole bunch of stuff with that show. And I remember the second that that happened and I knew the quality of his writing already. I was like, yeah, like, you know, this guy, he knows what he's doing with his writing. I remember I was like, that's the guy. That's the guy right there. Best decision I've ever made. Best decision I've ever made. I've already seen him come up with so many great things. Half of them that I can't even tell you guys because you don't know it, <laughs> but because it's future stuff. But some of the stuff that he's come up with, I'm like, holy shit. Like he took scripts that I already was like, this is like, I'm happy with this. Like, you know, that I wrote and he brought like new life to it too, added some stuff to it that I was like, holy crap. And it, it turned out even, even better than in my opinion, than it was already like, you know, I, I already enjoyed the scripts the way that they were, but I enjoy them even more with what he's done. You know, the, the additions that he's added to it are absolutely insane. So I hired Matt for the wrap up of this season. And I'm glad I did, because again, he helped with a lot of the writing for 4B and he helped out a lot with this, you know, this season to kind of wrap everything up. And, you know, like I said, this season, even before hiring Matt, I mean, it was going to wrap up in fall. That was the the idea. I had everything planned. But I remember we took those episodes and we enhanced them and we made them even bigger. And we added things to the scripts and we added some of his things that he may have wanted to add, you know, to, you know, some of these episodes. And we did what we have now, you know, and it's so impressive to me. And it's so incredible the work that was done. Not even funny. It's absolutely insane the work that he's brought to it. So and then here we are today, guys. Two years later, season four of World Guy Mad is done. That is the honest truth of everything I went through working on this season. I've never been so proud of a season in all my life, but I've also never been so satisfied to say that I'm out of that season. <laughs> you know, um, it was a it was a long road. It was a long journey. It was 18 episodes. It was a tough process, but you fans kept me going. You fans kept me here. And that's the thing. You know, I wouldn't have done this if it wasn't for you fans. And the concept of this show 
and the way it ends. And you're going to see it someday when this show finally comes to its conclusion. The concept for this show is something I couldn't let go. And I remember seeing the passion you guys had for this show. It kept me hanging on. Even when I was this close to giving up because everything was stacked up against me. I knew. I was like, no, this is special. And I don't think I will ever, as much as this is the most frustrating season for me to look back on as a writer, it's also the most proud I've ever been of my work because it has history to it. You know what I'm saying? Like it has character to it this season. It's not just a season. This is a part of my life that I went through working on this season. You know what I mean? And that means more to me than any other season. Like, and honestly, here's the thing. I have future seasons of this show that I think are better in concept, that I think blow this out of the water. And I'm not even trying to overhype that. I'm just saying, I think there are seasons later on of this show that are absolutely like even even better story-wise. But here's the thing. I don't think any other season will be as special to me. I, I just don't think it's ever going to happen again. You know, like I, I don't think any other season, like I will never forget this season. And not for the negative reasons, admittedly, for the positive reasons. I overcame what I thought was something that was impossible. You know, I hired a brilliant writer for this show. I persevered and did this season. And that's why I say, if you think you can't do something, if you think you just can't accomplish something, think again. Because after two years, after New Year, damn near two years, I can say the words, I completed the work that I thought was impossible. So there you go. That's really all I have to say. Aside from thank you all so much, Thank you all for your support. It does not go unnoticed. And that's why this video is made for y'all. I didn't need to do this video, but I did it because I know you guys deserve it. You've supported the show and you guys are why I'm here. That's what it is. You guys are why I'm here doing World Gone Mad. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, the channel is a separate thing and the Walking Dead videos and all that. That's a separate thing. But this show is it, it, something completely different to me. And... The people that watch this and, and the people that support this, I think deserved this video to know why things happen. But I can end the video on a really positive subject. Season 5 is already in filming, guys. And I, I plan to get that out to you guys at some point next year. That is something I can actually confirm to you. Season 5 is already in production. Season 5 is going into work right now. It's in early production. And like I said, I'm aiming for at some point next year you guys see in this season. So there you go. Um, but yeah, thank you seriously for the support. Thank you seriously for all the kind words you guys have given me about this show and all the passion you've shown. And here's to the future because we got a lot of story left to tell, lots of stuff to see, and I can't wait for y'all to see it. Thank you all for watching. Enjoy the rest of your, uh, <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day. And of course, uh, enjoy season five when it comes out next year. Thank you all for your support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.